Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to uh, to start uh, to explain some basic concepts in in management. Uh, why do we have management, and why management is important? And very important, we are going to uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis on the issue of, uh, of value. Uh, creating value is uh, the most important thing for for man managers in all organizations. That's like the name of the game. Uh, all managers try to uh, to create value, and we gonna see how they uh, they do that. Among the uh, so many different and important issues which we are going to uh, to explain uh, will be will be the issues of uh, who are managers, what do they do, and uh, why are are they important for organizations and and companies, and uh, what is an organization? How can we describe an organization? What makes up an organization? And and also. Uh, where where do where do managers work, and and we are going to describe the functions, roles, skills of managers, and describe the factors that are shaping and uh, redefining the manager's job. Uh, and as we said, the uh, the issue of uh, value is important, and and it also is of a lot of value for uh, for us to. Uh, to know why we uh, why we study management, we're going to start with the issue of uh, why managers are important. See, uh, for all organizations, whether those organizations are are, are small, uh, large organizations, uh, and regardless of the type of organization, whether organizations are private, whether they are public, whether they are international, whether they are governmental in all types of organizations we need to benefit from the managerial skills and managerial abilities especially if you notice that the whole world is changing and changing very fast and there are so many factors in that world factors which affect how business how how any type of organization functions the so many factors all of them impact how work is done inside organizations and and considering that these factors change a lot then organizations must 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 change a lot the factors affecting organizations uh, are, are 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 so very complex because they are so many and they have incredible uncertainty because they change a lot so whatever you may uh, face today it may be totally different tomorrow why because of the pace of change things change uh, change real fast and managers have to be very eloquent in managing uh, organizations in managing resources in order to cope up with the changes which uh, which take place and and very important to uh, to uh, to always remember that managers do not do work by themselves but they get things done through managing others managing people who do the real work people which we call employees we call uh, labor we call uh, workers and and even though managers are responsible about uh, about uh, work done by workers which manage manage but still managers are responsible they are responsible about work done by others and they are supposed to know how to manage those others so the quality of the relationship between employees and supervisors is is so very important and viable for the uh, production for the good performance for the impact positive impact that is of, uh, of uh, organizations on societies so when you think about uh, about managers we can say that they uh, they coordinate and oversee the work of, uh, of other people other people 
uh, mean the people which they manage. They uh, manage resources and among the resources which they manage are the uh, employees, labor. So uh, they get the work done, they get the intention of pursuing goals and accomplishing goals decided for the company through managing resources and among the most important resources they manage are of course people, people which we call human resources. And, and don't forget that managers actually manage resources and depending on the way of how they manage resources, organizations start to emerge. So uh, management is considered like uh, a vehicle uh, which use resources, deploy resources, process resources in order to create value. And as we go on uh, into more into uh, into the course, we're gonna know that there are a lot of uh, groups which managers are supposed to create value for. So managers manage resources, and uh, out of how they decide that they're gonna manage resources, so many activities start. Activities like like production, like marketing, like finance, HRM, and so on. And they all are directed at uh, processing, at uh, transforming the resources managed by managers in order to uh, produce products, that is, goods and services. So uh, when they succeed to uh, to sell them, make them and sell them, then most likely they're gonna they're gonna generate profit and they have to use that profit in order to create value for the different groups affected by the work of of the company and of the organization this figure shows and explains and and, and tell us that there are many different levels uh, of management and if you notice at the bottom we find that we have non-managerial employees, which mean employees and labor who do not manage, but are managed by, by the different types of managers in order to uh, nicely and effectively do the work. So any organization consists of, of two types of, uh, of uh, people. We have uh, the different types of managers and we have the non-managerial employees labor and and, and and workers so any organization consists of both managers and labor which sometimes we call operatives workers are the ones who are managing in order to uh, perform the real work so uh, managers uh, coordinate them, managers, coach them, managers, pave the way for them to facilitate performance and, and support them and guide them and give them direction. And, and eventually, hopefully, the, uh, the uh, workers will be able to, uh, to achieve the work assigned to them, the matter which would help the whole organization achieve the major the major goals and during the lecture we the real the, the lecture in the classroom we will explain why why do we have that pyramidal shape there are a lot to be said about about that figure about the pyramidal uh, shape which which shows the different levels different types of managers and and we gonna know why the top level management managers at the top of the hierarchy why do we call them uh, top level management why do we call them strategic managers and and those at the middle we're gonna we're gonna 
easily understand what what do they what do they manage but anyway for now we call them tactical level managers managers responsible of different functions and the first line managers are 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 those responsible about managing operations operations performed by non managerial employees <coughs> and before we go on we have to know we have to digest the fact that being a manager is not easy it's it's tough and it entails a lot of uh, responsibility it it uh, uh, it's it's so hard it's very challenging to be uh, to be a manager you know why because when you are a manager and responsible about a work unit you are supposed to manage the work unit in order for workers to work on the tasks and eventually have <coughs> a val valuable outcome and of course there is a chance that the outcomes are not all that good and if the manager's boss ask him or her why the outcomes are not up to the standards why the outcomes are not at uh, high quality why uh, the outcomes are not are, are not good if managers say that well the outcomes are not good because my employees the labor that is are are, are lazy uh, they are not skilled they are good for nothing see you know what the manager's boss will do the manager's boss will fire the manager not the employees because manager is supposed to know how to manage labor and workers in order to uh, perform their jobs well and 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 have high quality uh, outcomes so so if the employees do not achieve high quality outcomes then this means that the manager they know how to manage them and in that case the manager would be fired not the employees that's why management is considered as as a challenge the challenge of being responsible about outcomes which others work on but others which you as a manager is supposed to uh, to smoothly manage and and help them achieve achieve positive results there are many ways based on which we can classify managers actually we have many different types of managers and we can differentiate between managers based on their uh, their level in the pyramidal shape which you just uh, saw and also we can we can distinguish between them based on what area of management i mean i mean what function they they manage like like uh, when it comes to different areas of management and different functions of management we have uh, we have managers responsible about production we have managers responsible about finance about marketing about human resource management and all all of those managers are called middle level managers so the middle level managers are managers responsible about the different functions and that's how we can horizontally differentiate between managers uh, also we can differentiate between managers based on the nature of their authority see we have we have different types of managers based on the type of authority they possess and in that regard we have line managers and staff managers Line managers are like the managers responsible about career operations, about real hard work, work which has 
physical outcomes we can see like the production manager production manager is responsible about 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 manufacturing uh, goods offering and 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 actually serving customers so the outcomes which we can see which we can count which we can calculate their uh, their revenues that's why we uh, we say that uh, the manager responsible about about operations whether that manager is the production manager the finance manager the uh, uh, marketing manager these types of managers are called line managers and line managers possess executive authority or line authority line authority or executive authority means that managers those managers line managers give orders and their orders must be followed they are not up to discussion but whenever they order the workers to do something whatever they ask should be done why because they, they are responsible about important outcomes however if we contrast them with the staff managers staff managers have a staff authority they uh, they are more of uh, experts they have incredible in-depth expertise and knowledge about 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 different specialities like the statisticians statisticians know how to crunch numbers they know how to uh, to uh, to summarize uh, the outcomes of work in 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 statistical way so uh, they are experts on the subject matter and and whenever they give order the orders are in the form of giving giving advice uh, telling others what to do however it is up to the line managers whether to work on the suggestions the consultation given by staff managers or not so staff authority means that staff managers give orders in the form of advice however their orders may be followed and maybe not followed and the uh, we can differentiate between managers also uh, in a vertical way we have the different levels of management the one which we described a minute ago we have to the top level managers who are responsible about uh, uh, devising about forming strategies strategies which give direction to the whole organization and we have middle level managers managers of the different uh, functions and we have the uh, lower level management the lower level management uh, has many names maybe maybe supervisors maybe uh, group heads maybe team leaders they are the ones responsible about real work that's why we sometimes call them the operational level management now we turn to the concept of organization see any uh, any organized work uh, any company any institution we we can safely say that uh, it is an organization even if we are talking about uh, a consulting office a small office that's an organization if we are talking about uh, a tourist company that's an organization if we are talking and describing the government as an organization so uh, why why do we call it an organization we call it an organization because it has it has people and and people interact together and uh, people have assigned work they have uh, they have uh, positions and work to perform however in order for them to be able to perform the work 
they have to interact with others they have to uh, play a role which enables them to perform the job and in doing so they have to interact with others so actually what interacts with others are the role the person performs so the different roles that of each person in what we call an organization the role itself interacts with the roles of others so that the roles performed by employees collectively enact in order to jointly achieve a common end achieve a goal achieve making a product making goods or or services and the kind of interaction between the uh, the roles actually shows what we uh, what we call uh, real work so how people how roles interact together describes how work is done and consequently it explains the structure through which work is performed and goals are achieved so uh, if we if we want to describe an organization we're gonna say that any organization consists of people and when people interact together when people perform their roles people make up a social entity people people invent a social system through which work is done so any organization has a social entity which is deliberately structured through performance of roles and the uh, work achieved by the enactment of roles result in creating a structure a structure through which work is done and goals are achieved so uh, organizations are like uh, a deliberate uh, management of people who interact together to uh, achieve some specific goal or or or, or purpose uh, goal or purpose which no one person by him or her self can can accomplish alone and having described organizations in in such way uh, what we, what we said uh, tells us that all organizations no matter of their uh, size and shape and type they all have some common characteristics there are features which we can find which we can notice which we can analyze in any organization and the, these characteristics are are, are 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 that all of them they any organization must have a goal and any organization uh, consists of people people who make up a social entity and any organization has a deliberate structure structure set forth for the purpose of achieving a specific goal that's why structures are deliberately decided so any organization has three common characteristics the all they all have the same the, the same characteristic and and these uh, characteristics are that they have their people they have structure 
and they have goal so any organization must have people must have structure and must have goals to pursue so to uh, wrap it all up we can safely say that management involves the activity of coordinating overseeing and monitoring work activities enacted by others so that their activities the activities of others are are completed efficiently and effectively and and next lecture we're going to explain what we mean by efficiency and effectiveness both are like are, are like preconditions for the success of managers in managing organizations.